Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, epistemology, some basic concepts in epistemology. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, epistemology has to do with knowledge. Uh, what is it? What are the conditions of knowing? What does it mean to know something? What are the sources of knowledge and so on? But let me say something about the different types of knowing. Um, there are basically three different ways in which we can talk about knowing something. There's one is uh, knowing that, knowing that something is true. So knowing, knowing that, this is called uh, knowing that P, P is any proposition, knowing that today is Monday, knowing that the cat is on the mat, knowing that it's raining outside. This is propositional knowledge, uh, knowing that something is true. And this is basically, this is really what philosophy has been concerned with ever since uh, Plato, Aristotle, up through Locke and Descartes, that what they were searching for was uh, a foundation uh, for knowledge. I mean, what first, what, how can we gain certainty? What are the conditions of knowledge? What are the sources of knowledge? What they're talking about is propositional knowledge, the knowledge that science deals with, knowledge about the world. Okay, that's one type of knowledge, propositional knowledge. On the other hand, you have, a no, uh, Bertrand Russell came up with this uh, a term uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. Russell talks about knowledge by acquaintance. So that's another type of knowledge, knowledge by acquaintance. So the first one is propositional knowledge, propositional, I'll write that here. And the second one is knowledge by acquaintance. That's Russell's terminology. And this is knowledge by acquaintance is when you when you see something immediately. So, for example, uh, you see the color red. Okay, that's you have not you have acquaintance with red. You you feel a pain. You have direct knowledge of the pain. You see something. Anytime you see anything, you have knowledge by acquaintance. You, you, let's say you see a dog, and let's say you walk closer, and it, there's no dog there. So you were mistaken about the fact that there was a dog there. But Russell says you are. You can never be mistaken about what you see. If you think you see a dog, then you see. You think you see a dog. A, appearances. Uh, what appears to you, appears to you. And that's knowledge by acquaintance. Knowledge by acquaintance has no opposite. You, you see what you see. You're acquainted with what you're acquainted. Propositional knowledge has an opposite. It could be, if I believe it's raining outside, that could be true or false. So propositional knowledge has opposites, true, false. Knowledge by acquaintance has no opposite. You see what you see. You know what you know. If you're talking about knowledge by acquaintance, um, okay, and then the third type of knowledge, it was, this is a, this was uh, G.E. Moore, or, or Gilbert Ryle, actually. Gilbert Ryle came up with this one. He calls it uh, 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 how, knowing how, knowing how to do something. Know-how knowledge. I'll just put knowing how to do something. Uh, this is a Gilbert Ryle. So Gilbert Ryle came up with this one, Bertrand Russell with this one. This one, the propositional knowledge, got, that goes all the way back to Plato, Aristotle. Uh, knowing how to, that would be, for example, an example of that would be, I know how to tie my shoes. Uh, if you asked me to write, right now, if you asked me to write an essay or a series of, a description of how to tie my shoes, I couldn't do it. I would have to actually tie my shoes, watch myself doing it, and then write what I did and then write that down. Because I can't tell you, you know, how to tie your shoes right now. I, have to, I just have to do it. I know how to tie my shoes, but same thing with riding a bike. If I, if I, I couldn't write an essay and tell you how to ride a bike, you know, exactly how to stay on the bike. I can do, I can ride a bike and most people can ride a bike, or, you know, but they can't tell you how they do it. That's know-how knowledge. So that's three di very different types of knowledge. And they're all uh, fundamental to human existence. 
Um, in fact, uh, many people believe that know-how knowledge and knowledge by acquaintance are actually more basic than propositional knowledge. I mean, it looks like propositional knowledge seems to come after know-how knowledge. I mean, we know how to do many things. Uh, we know how to go shopping. You know how to, uh, you know, if, you, if somebody says, how do I go shopping? Uh, that would be difficult to tell them. I mean, you have to, you have to start thinking about it and you write a little rule book. And if they try to actually go shopping according to your rule book, they probably wouldn't do a very good job because you probably wouldn't do a very good job of describing it. But you know how to do it. That's know-how knowledge. You, you know how to get about in the world. Anyway, so that's three basic different views of knowledge. Know-how knowledge, knowing how to do something, know how to tie your shoes, ride a bike. Uh, knowledge by acquaintance, whatever, you, whatever appears to you. You open your eyes and you see something. That's knowledge. Whatever you see, that's knowledge by acquaintance. You cannot be mistaken about what you see. You can definitely be mistaken about the, what you, the conclusions you draw from what you see. I mean, you may be seeing something. If you're in a desert and you see water in front of you, it may turn out that the water, that was an illusion. You get closer and you realize that there's no water there. But you were not mistaken in what you saw. You were mistaken in the conclusion you drew from it. So you go from knowledge by acquaintance and then you can't be mistaken about what you see, but you can be mistaken when you, turn, when you make a propositional inference from that. There is water there. Okay, and that's if there's no water there, your statement was false. So that's three different types of, of knowing. So it's very important to keep that in mind because a lot of times when, when you hear discussions about knowledge, it's just taken for granted that we're talking about propositional knowledge. And that's not, that's a mistake. So, and I don't know, maybe you could think of some other, I guess, yeah, there's probably other types of knowledge too. I mean, Let's say mystical knowledge. Some people believe they have a mystical knowledge of God. Mystics do that. I mean, so I guess that would come under the category of knowledge by acquaintance uh, with Russell. Unless you, I, I don't know. I mean, unless that's a different category. But anyway, the three main, the three main types that are 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 are, are signaled out uh, as are knowledge by know-how knowledge, knowledge by acquaintance, and propositional knowledge. Um, okay, so I'm going to be talking. Uh, I'm going to be confining my comments to propositional knowledge at this point, uh, knowing that something is true. And let me go over some of the main theories, main epistemological. Uh, theories about what it means to know something. First, the first one, the, the, the one that is the traditional one that's been around for a couple thousand years is the core, it's called the correspondence theory. So you know, when I know that something is true, when I know that P is true, the correspondence theory says that when you know that something is true, your belief corresponds to something in the world, right? So it corresponds to it. If I believe that the cat is on the mat, that's a that's a belief. The cat is on the mat if it corresponds to a fact, the fact of the matter. So you look to see, is the cat on the mat? <clears throat> that's correspondence theory of truth. Um, it's raining outside. You look to see, uh, you, you compare your, your, your belief with something external, something independent of the belief. Bertrand Russell uh, believed in the course. Most people have. Uh, Bertrand Russell is one who who did accept the correspondence view, of, uh, correspondence view, uh, and that seems to you know be uh, I just kind of seem to be the common sense view. I mean, it's like if I believe that it's raining outside, my belief is true if it corresponds to a fact of the matter. Um, there are some problems with that, though. You know, when with the correspondence theory, I'll give you one example. That's a problem. Let's say you're you're you're, you're think of a baseball game. The pitcher throws the the pitcher throws the ball. Um, okay, now is it a strike or a ball? Well, you could say, well, it's a strike if it corresponds to the fact that the ball went past the home plate in a certain place. You know, it couldn't be too high, couldn't be too low, couldn't be too inside, couldn't be too outside. So you say it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a strike 
if it corresponds to the definition of a strike, right? Um, but think about it, though. <clears throat> yeah, it does. That uh, There's a couple problems with that. First of all, in baseball, uh, a strike is not necessarily a pitch that corresponds to the definition of what a strike must be, because in baseball, a strike is what the umpire says. If the umpire says ball, and actually the, the pitch actually objectively corresponded, met the criterion of a strike, but the umpire says ball, it's a ball. So there's a problem right there because then what, what is a strike? I mean, what does it correspond to? In this case, it's not really corresponding to anything objectively, it's just cor corresponding to the umpire's subjective, subjective uh, opinion. On the other hand, also, there's another problem with it because you say, well, uh, the pitch is a strike if it corresponds to the rule, the, de the definition of a strike. Yeah, well, but the definition of a strike is not is something that human beings have made up. We That's a convention, totally conventional. They could have defined it in a different way. They could have said it could have been a little higher or a little lower, a little to the left, to the little to the right. So when you say this, it's a strike, you're not saying that it corresponds to anything objective in the world. You're saying it corresponds to the way we have set the rules up. So that creates a problem for correspondence because then you're no longer talking about does is my statement true because it corresponds to something in the world. Now the statement is true if it corresponds to the way we have set the, the, the rules up. Same thing in chess. I mean, uh, a rook moves a certain way, a bishop moves a certain way. So I could say my move, is, it's a good move if, if it corresponds to the rules of chess. Uh, but again, that's the, the correspondence there is not as, to something objective in the world. It's, it's correspondence to the rules that we have ourselves set up. The rules that we have ourselves set up. So correspondence is not referring to something in the world. It's referring to something in us. We've set the rules up. So, okay, that's correspondence theory anyway. So, I mean, there are problems with it, but that's basically the idea. Then you've got the... Uh, uh, the coherence coherence theory of meaning and coherence theory of meaning says that statements are true or false not depending upon whether they correspond to something in the world but according to all of our beliefs so if I say I'm holding a pen in my hand is that true well uh, a correspondence if you believe in correspondence you say yeah it's true if there's a it's a there's a pen here but people that believe in the coherence theories say it really does a correspondence really doesn't make any sense all all we have are beliefs uh, and basically, if you, I, if I believe, if we all believe that this is a pen, and we all believe, if I say, is it true that I'm holding this in a pen? If we all, we all agree on that this is a pen, we all agree on what it means to hold something in your hand. We all, you know, basically, we all agree with the words I'm using. Um, basically, base uh, the coherence theory says that all we can, ex all you can really demand of any type of knowledge is that it coheres with everything else you believe. If I say, for example, I'm holding an apple in my hand, the reason the co uh, coherence theory of, of belief uh, uh, would say that's a false statement is because that's not, this is not what we would call an apple. It doesn't cohere with all my beliefs. So you've got the correspondence theory, you've got the coherence theory. And one more I'll mention really fast is uh, the pragmatic theory of truth, which is so associated with the pragmatist people like Dewey, Peirce, uh, James, and this is a view that a truth is, is it, a statement is true if it works. Now it, they're not talking about if it works for me individually. They're talking about if it works for the whole society. Um, so is quantum physics true? Basically, a pragmatist would say, yeah, it's true if it works. I mean, if, if physicists and scientists and, and people in, in technology use it all the time and they never have any problems with it, um, it always works. Uh, and it does work. I mean, that's what we have. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, cell phones. We have GPS systems. Uh, it, it works in physics. You do all the equations. It always works. And uh, a pragmatist will say, what more do you want? If a concept always works and it doesn't lead to problems, then... Uh, then you can accept it as true. So that's three main theories of truth. The correspondence theory, something is true if it corresponds to a, a fact outside of itself. Coherence basically has to co co correspond, uh, cohere with all your, the web of beliefs and the pragmatist theory, something is true if it works, not just individually for you, but for the whole society.